He's like, I'll read fast. I'll read fast. He's a pro. I mean, he's done this before. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I want you to picture this. In 1985, I was a five year old kid. I was chubby cheek. I had pale skin. Okay. So I'm still all those things. <laughs> but I was a kid, okay? My mom bought me a ticket to Detroit Tiger Stadium to see one of baseball's living legends. I'm talking, of course, about one of the greatest baseball players that ever lived, Pete Charlie Hustle Rose. And I want to show proof that he, ahead of all others, deserves his rightful place in the Hall of Fame. Now, during my well-traveled life, I've been fortunate enough to see some of the greats step up to the plate in the mound. <clears throat> the first baseball memory I ever had was this exhibition game that I went to. My mom bought me a ticket, and Pete Rose was the only big name player that actually took the field. And this was at an away game. Now, Pete put on his cleats, not only for the fans, but for his city and for his teammates in the clubhouse. And he played the same way for 23 years, the way he slid into first, head first. For my two main points today, I want to highlight a few of Pete Rose's phenomenal stats that will make his case for induction in the Hall of Fame and discuss his controversial banishment from the baseball diamond he lived for. Now, Pete did amass record numbers and did have limitless talent. As a switch hitter and an excellent glove man, Pete earned every major hitting and fielding award Major League Baseball had to offer. In 1963, Pete was voted Major League Baseball's Rookie of the Year. Two years later, he was chosen for his first of 17 All-Star Game appearances and also won three World Series rings in 1975 and 76 with the Cincinnati Reds and in 1980 with the Phillies. His greatest accomplishment came on September 11, 1985. The Reds' player manager singled the center field for hit number 4,192. This surpassed Ty Cobb's unreachable mark set nearly half a century ago. This made him baseball's all-time hit king. Throughout the entire storied history of baseball, no man holds more records in more categories than Pete Charlie Hustle Rose. In Ray Robinson and Christopher Jennison's book entitled Greats of the Game, they mention Pete several times, but they sum up his entire career by saying this. Even when he got walked, Pete Rose ran to first base. Now let's shift gears a little bit and we'll talk about the personal and unfortunate decline of baseball's hit king. Pete did have an addiction. This addiction resulted in lifetime banishment from the league. Now unlike most of baseball's problem children of today, his addiction didn't stem from steroids. <clears throat> it stemmed from gambling. In 1989, after 26 glorious years in baseball, Pete was banished from the league for violating rule number 21 of Major League Baseball's personal conduct policy. In rule number 21, section D entitled betting on ball games, states any player, umpire, or club official, or league employee, or employee that should bet any sum whatsoever upon any baseball game upon which he has no duty to perform shall be declared ineligible for one year. Now if that same player, employee, umpire, league official bets on any game upon which he has a duty to perform, he must be declared permanently ineligible. Basically, to sum this up, if you bet on baseball and you're not playing in the game, you're suspended. If you bet on a baseball game that you played in, you're banished for life. Yes, Pete bet on sports. He bet on sports of all kinds. And after years of denial, he finally admitted that he bet on his precious Cincinnati Reds. But let the record show that Pete always bet on them to win. Pete believed in his team. He always did. Pete Rose never used steroids like A-Rod, Mark McGuire. These men cheated like cowards. Pete made his mark in baseball through hard work, determination, 
and perseverance. Pete put his stamp on baseball by swinging his bat <coughs> and playing anywhere on the field that him, his team needed him most. In conclusion, I hope I have si highlighted the facts surrounding the case of Pete Rose and have provided some insight into his astonishing accomplishments. While researching this speech, I checked out several books and spent countless hours on the internet researching Charlie Hustle. In every single one of these books and articles, Mr. Rose is mentioned numerous times, and every major sports writer I research agrees that Pete Rose belongs in the Hall of Fame alongside greats like Joe DiMaggio, Hammer and Hank Aaron, Mickey Mantle, and his old pal, Johnny Bench. No matter what happens to Pete in the future, he'll always be a Hall of Famer in my book, thanks to his hard work and that storied spring day way back in 1985. Thank you. What was the time we tried? It was 5.54. Thank you.